I mean, how the particle is moving, how the distance of the particle, displacement of the particle is changing with respect to time. And after that, we will derive how velocity of the particle is changing with respect to time. So, hello everyone. I am Rakesh Nath and I am a faculty of mathematics optional for in Tutas IAS Academy. So, today we are going to have a small session, a discussion of a very interesting topic. It's a topic of paper one of mathematics optional. Simple harmonic motion. So today we're going to discuss what is a simple harmonic motion. How do we get to the equations of very uh, different variables over in, engaged over here? And we will come to the conclusions how we have to uh, develop relations between different variables. And we will solve some previous equations to have clarity about the about uh, the topic. Right. So let's start. So simple harmonic motion is uh, in the syllabus. It is. Um, Sorry, I forgot to write it. It is in paper one of mathematics optional. In the syllabus, it is in paper one of mathematics optional. It comes under the head of dynamics and static. And they, uh, in the syllabus, a single keyword is mentioned, simple harmonic motion. So, right. So we just have to focus on these two keywords. First of all, the motion should be only a simple motion. Simple in the sense it should be engaging only in a linear direction only. There can be harmonic motions that engages degree of freedom two and above. Uh, just like this, this is a pendulum. This is a two different distinct mass pendulum. And when this will oscillate, this will oscillate with two degrees of freedom. Right? We say this one m1, this one m2. So there will be two independent variables here that will define the motion. This will be theta one, and this will be theta two. So these two data will be independent variables. So this thing is not a simple harmonic motion. This is a complicated harmonic motion, and we does not have to dwell in such kind of things. In syllabus, it is clearly mentioned we have to focus only on simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motions are iterative. First of all, what is a harmonic motion? Harmonic means something which is repetitive that is iterative. So harmonic motion is this kind of motion where a particle repeats itself after a specific period of time. We call that thing a time period. So when particle repeats itself its motion, then it is a harmonic motion. And simple will be uh, when the harmonic motion engages only in a linear single variable direction. Linear thing means the particle is moving in a straight line, or the particle is moving with single angular displacement a single theta. There is only one angle engaged over here, and in a linear motion, there is only one variable. The distance of particle from a fixed point on a single unique direction, right? So this is a one-dimensional motion, and this is also a one-dimensional motion. This is in rotational dynamics, and this is in linear dynamics. So we have to only engage here is two things: simple motion in a linear direction, in a linear dynamics that is one D motion, and simple motion in angular dynamics that is a single theta motion. So these are only two things we have to focus over here that will be constituting our simple harmonic motion. Right. So let's start. What's a simple harmonic motion? The defining parameter, the defining property, is this second-order differential equation. If any particle follows this differential equation, irrespective whether it's a one-dimensional in a linear dynamics or in a rotational dynamics, if any particle follows this differential equation, second-order differential equation, then we can say that the particle is following a simple harmonic motion. Right. Only this differential equation is necessary, and this will be sufficient to satisfy, uh, to justify that particle is following a simple harmonic motion. So, what this differential equation is saying here: x is the distance of particle from a fixed point, and generally, and generally by convention, we take the point as origin, and t is obviously that's time. So, basic calculus: x is distance. First differential of x with respect to time, x dot, that will be velocity. And second differential of displacement with respect to time is acceleration. So this differential equation is saying the acceleration of particle, the second order differentiation with respect to time. This is acceleration. Acceleration of particle is proportional to negative of its displacement. This is a very simple uh, second order differential equation, engaging one variable x. This is saying when acceleration is proportional to negative of its displacement. Then the particle is following a straight line motion. Uh, sorry, sorry, simple harmonic motion. So we can say here, 
let me define a path where a and b are two nodes nodes are the endpoints uh, it is the limiting point it is the bounding point there between which the particle is oscillating so these are two nodes of a particle let the middle point of the line ab be o and we taking o is the origin or the reference point the fixed point whatever we say that it is a reference point o and distance x will be measured always from the reference point let's for some instant when some arbitrary time t the particle is at point p right so distance of particle p is defined as the distance op and that will be x right so we are saying this particle will be oscillating between two nodes a and b and the distance we are measuring from the midpoint o so what this differential equation is asking uh, is guiding us the second order differential of this position vector that was the acceleration tell it write this thing again the second order differential of position vector with respect to time that is our acceleration here will be proportional to negative of the distance if this particle follows this differential equation then it is a simple harmonic motion right so let us start deriving the equation deriving the equation means here we have to define the relation between x and t i mean how the particle is moving how the distance of the particle displacement of the particle is changing with respect to time and after that we will derive how velocity of the particle is changing with respect to time so it is a very simple thing to prove here we have to do nothing else but solve this second order differential equation this is second order differential equation engaging only one variable it's a very simple thing so to remove proportionality sign we have to introduce a constant let us introduce an arbitrary constant over here minus new x where new is some arbitrary constant we introduce new to remove this proportionality sign is some arbitrary constant now our only focus thing is this first we have some this proportionality sign or differential equation now we have a clear cut second order differential equation we only need to solve this thing as a very simple thing to do let's start this if we solve this differential equation then we will get the equation of our shm where x is the uh, distance of the particle with respect to our reference point so to solve this differential equation let us multiply both side by dx by dt in our topic od or pd we will discuss in detail how to solve these kind of differential equations right we start by multiplying dx by dt and to make our equation in a simpler form we can write dx by dt as p so d2x by dtx d2x by dt square will be dp by dt right p is dx by dt and we differentiate with respect to time then we will got second order differential of x with respect to time so we started with an substitution we substituted dx by dt as p then we came to this thing second order differentiation d2x by dt square will be dp by dt so when we uh, then we'll put these to substitution in our original differential equation then we'll see our differential equation will become a lot simpler we started with d2x by dt square dx by dt is equal to minus new x dx by dt right so in left side of our equation we are substituting we are substituting dx by dt is p so we will get dp by dt dx by dt is p is equal to minus new x dx by dt then we will get uh, then this is a first order differential equation it's a very simple differential equation let's solve this multiplying by dt on both the side and integrating the two we will get p dp is equal to minus new x dx so we will integrate this we will get p square by 2 is equal to minus new x square by 2 plus c na p dp is p square by 2 integration of p dp and similarly integration of x dx is also x square by 2 now what we have to do simple thing we have to remove this proportionality a uh, uh, arbitrary constant that is constant of integration so for removing this constant of integration what we have to do we have to put a specific condition specific condition where we know the values of p and x this new x so we know the properties of shm basic properties of shm are 
velocity is maximum at the midpoint and velocity is zero at the nodes the extreme points and acceleration acceleration is zero and acceleration is maximum at the endpoints and one another interesting thing of linear uh, matlab simple harmonic motion obviously simple harmonic motion is a linear motion another very interesting thing of simple harmonic motion is we started with this foundational differential equation this is our foundation thing clearly we can observe here is there is only one independent variable sorry one dependent variable x x here is dependent variable that is dependent on time and the position of x in differential equation is such that it is symmetric with respect to x right if we take negative x with, uh, if we substitute x by negative x we will get d2 x by d minus by d d2 by dt square minus x is equal to minus new minus x cancelling minus both the side we will reach to same differential equation minus new x so what we got it it is an even function it uh, the motion is symmetric with uh, with respect to x uh, y axis i mean the motion is symmetric in the x axis the the nature of the motion in positive x direction and the nature of the motion in negative x direction though both nature will be exactly the same what i mean to say is the velocity of the point, a point at any part at velocity of particle at any point let us say x1 in positive direction and the velocity of the particle and minus x1 that is in the negative x direction will be the same its acceleration will also be the same at x1 and minus x1 since it is a symmetric thing it is an even thing with respect to x axis so it is an interesting fact with respect to shm since our differential equation is a symmetric differential equation or even differential equation right so obviously the nature of particle at extreme point b will be the same as a so velocity is a zero at both the extremes and acceleration is maximum and p is and r we all know we substituted p as dx by dt and we all know that dx by dt is velocity so we know at point p at b p that is velocity that is dx by dt is is zero and x is let us say a let us say this distance is a the distance of end point b with respect to a reference point and we know that it is a symmetric thing so distance of a will also be the same ha na we came uh, we assume that the distance of our end points are b a let us say it is some point or some variable a so putting these values our p is 0 so 0 is equal to minus new x is a a square by 2 plus c right so our c will be new a square by 2 putting this constant of integration in this value what we got is p square by 2 is equal to minus new x square by 2 plus new a square by 2 this is our solution where p was velocity p is dx by dt and dx by dt is velocity hmm so what we got here is let us write p as velocity for a moment here so v square is equal to a square minus x square a square minus x square right this is the first relation that we got after solving our second order differential equation that is a this is a relation between v that is velocity of particle and x position of particle where nu is a constant that we introduce and uh, after this we will solve this thing again to get a relation of distance uh, yeah, the position of a particle with respect to time so again we have to solve we have to put 
P as dx by dt. P is velocity that is dx by dt. So dx by dt square is equal to nu a square minus x square. Right. Taking square root both the side, it is nu a square minus x square under root. And there will be a negative sign. And the negative sign, you'll ask why we put a negative sign over here. The negative sign is for the reason we have taken this side. It is by convention that right side of any reference point is in a positive direction, and in rotational form, anti clockwise direction is a positive thing. It is by conven international convention. So, this thing, this, uh, this right side of a reference point, this will be positive x, and the velocity at this point is towards the center. So position vector and velocity vector is always logarithm, not logarithm, are supplemented to each other. So that's why when this thing, dx by dt, the velocity vector we are comparing with this position vector, then we have to introduce the negative sign because position vector and velocity vector are in opposite direction all the time. So when we then we will reshuffle this thing to separate our variables, a square minus x square is equal to minus nu of dt. And we will have root over here also root dt. So integrating this thing again, this is a very simple integration. This is sin inverse x y a is equal to minus under root nu t plus c. Right? Since, since we know integration of dx upon under root a square minus x square is equal to sin inverse x y a. This is an integration that we know. So again, we will do the same thing. We will put a, let's call this constant D. We already have introduced constant C over it in our previous solution. So we'll do the same thing. We'll put some uh, previously known values to eliminate uh, this constant of integration. Let us here observe this uh, reference points. Oh, at this reference point, we know X is equal to zero and velocity, okay. Let us assume here, we have to assume with this time. Let us assume at t is equal to 0. When we start observing the particle, we can take a particle anywhere at t equal to 0. Just for reference, it is a reference thing. And for convention, generally, generally we say that at t equal to 0, the particle will be at some extreme. We can take particle anywhere. It, it's upon us. The equation will be the same. The All the parameters, all the relation will be the same. But it's just a convention. We take particle. And uh, when we start observing the particle, we assume that the particle is at one of the extreme. So let us take at t equal to 0, particle is at point B. So x is equal to a plus a. Right. This is plus a. We assume, write this also. We assume at t equal to 0, particle at B. So putting these values, sine inverse 0 by a is equal to minus under root nu. Oh, I'm sorry, a by a sine under root nu into 0 plus d. So our d over here is mm, pi by 2. Since a by a is 1 and sine inverse 1 is pi by 2. So putting this value of d in this linear relation that we got between x and t, we will get what we will get sine inverse x by a is equal to minus under root nu t plus pi by 2. This is the thing that we got. Now, a little bit of juggling between the variables, we will get taking sine both the sides. Sine inverse of sine is the same. Sine of sine inverse theta is equal to theta. Right? So this is x by a sine of under root nu t plus pi by 2 with a negative sign. x by a is equal to cos root nu t. Since, since we know that sine of pi by 2 minus theta is equal to cos theta and cos of pi by 2 minus theta is equal to sine theta. Right.
and for simplicity just another convention nothing else we generally put new under root new is omega or new is equal to omega square so putting this thing also and multiplying a both the side we will get x is equal to a cos omega t this is a relation between position vector of particle that is following in simple harmonic motion with respect to time this is the main relation that we was searching for right so we started with a defining second order differential equation is equal to under root new x so this is what we started with hmm then solving this we get velocity square is equal to new a square minus x square this was our first relation between velocity and distance then we solve this further we then got relation between position vector and time a cos omega t and we just to make things simplified simplified we write new is equal to omega square this is nothing else this we introduce another constant we are not introducing another constant we just substituting under root new omega to make make the thing look more beautiful all the things so when we solve this second order differential equation first we got a relation between velocity and distance and then solving this further we got a relation between distance and time right so initially when we started discussing we we said that it's a simple harmonic motion so harmonic means something that is iterative something that is repetitive cyclical so clearly we can say the position vector is represented by a, a sinusoidal function the position vector is represented by cos theta and it's a very well established thing that cosines and sinusoidal function are cyclical functions cosine is something like that with a time period of 2 pi so it is a cyclical function so it is very clear that the position vector of the particle will also follow a cyclical or an iterative pattern it is very clear x is represented by sinusoidal function so x is bound to be a cyclical thing right so these are two solution that we got we started with this st uh, standard differential equation first of all we got relation between velocity and distance and then we got a relation between distance with respect to time right so let us discuss some these are some critical keywords that are in uh, that are associated with this sm so a basic structure of motion was we have two end points a and b and a center midpoint reference point o we said the particle will follow a cyclical repetitive motion between these two nodes where a and b are these end, end points and we also established that the motion will follow a symmetrical pattern with respect to x axis the motion will follow uh, a even function pattern with respect to x axis the all the parameters of the variable in the positive x direction and the parameters of the variable in negative x direction will be the same so the amplitude is maximum displacement of the particle we are studying all these thing from 10th class is nothing new i'm just establishing this over here also these are all the same thing that we are studying from class 9 class 10 so amplitude is the maximum displacement with respect to reference point and maximum displacement here will be at the nodes and by general convention we already established that we represented we represent this by a variable a amplitude is represented by a it is a maximum displacement nothing new it is maximum displacement then time period time period is time taken to complete one oscillation it is also that is studying this in class 10 there is nothing new over here and we know and we know that our motion was represented by this thing by cosine function and we also know that if a function fx should i root it should i should i take it let me remove this thing i'll draw it again if it needs be if a function fx has a time period t let a function fx is a cyclical function of time period t then we know that by calculus thing we will discuss this part in calculus the time period of a modified function of fx fax is t by mod a i'll repeat this thing we said that if we take a cyclical function with time period t then the time period of modified function f ax where a is some constant is t by root a and here we know that 
टाइम पीरियड ऑफ कोसाइन फंक्शन इज टू पाई सो टाइम पीरियड ऑफ आई मीन सॉरी टाइम पीरियड ऑफ कॉस टी इज टू पाई राइट सो टाइम पीरियड इज कॉस ओमेगा टी वेर इज ओमेगा इज सम कॉन्स्टेंट विल बी टू पाई बाई ओमेगा यूजिंग दिस थिंग राइट आई रिमूव दिस थिंग नाउ आई रिमूव दिस थिंग ऑल्सो सो वी नो दैट पोजिशन वेक्टर इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई कोसाइन फंक्शन एक्स इज इक्वल टू ए कॉस ओमेगा टी and by virtue of this function we say that time period of oscillation of our particle will be 2 pi by omega by virtue of the relation that we establish that the position vector will be represented by a cosine function then the frequency of motion frequency is the basic definition of frequency is the number of oscillations the particle is taking per unit time the number of oscillations the particle is taking per unit time say if the time period is 4 seconds so it is taking 4 second to complete one oscillation so in per unit time in one second the particle is completing one fourth of the oscillation right it's a very unitary binary thing uh, unitary thing 10 kilo ka itna hai to 1 kilo ka kitne ka hoga time period is 4 second so in one second the particle is completing one fourth of the cycle right so frequency will be here 1 by 4 i hope it is clear frequency is 1 upon time period if the time period of particle let's say time period is half second it is taking half second to complete one oscillation so obviously in one second it will be doing two uh, repetitions so frequency in that sense will be two it is second inverse its unit is second inverse right so frequency is inverse of time period i'll write this thing in words also time taken to cover number of oscillation per unit time this is our frequency and angular velocity it is a coronary it is a parallel thing of linear velocity angular velocity is angle subtended per unit time just like velocity is distance covered per unit time angle subtended per unit time angle subtended in time and we know that in a circular rotational motion when a particle started from a reference point o when it covers a complete oscillation in one single oscillation the angle subtended of the particle is 2 pi when it covers a complete oscillation it covers a complete 2 pi angle with respect to the center so angle subtended in one cycle is 2 pi and time taken to cover one cycle is 2 pi by t right so angular velocity and it is a convention the angular velocity is represented by omega so omega is 2 pi by time period and very interestingly these two equations are same right so these are nothing new terms these are not something we are seeing this for first time we have been very familiar with these terms these are very basic term that is that is uh, these terms are associated with any kind of function that is symmetric that is cyclical that is iterative and since harmonic motion is also iterative so uh, the basic the basic uh, what we can say the harmonic motion can be defined in these terms also its amplitude its time period its angular velocity so we started with the second order differential equation And this was the basic cornerstone differential equation that was provided to us and when we solve this second order differential equation we got these two relation between velocity this position vector and time so any question of simple harmonic motion let it be any question that is come in previous year also and the the question that will be coming in new in, uh, in this year and next year papers also this can easily be tackled if we know these two basic uh, relation between velocity distance and time we just have to know these two relations and we have to in back of the mind we have to to some extent know the derivation how we came to this solution using this differential equation this differential equation the basic solution how we get to these two equations and we have to remember these two equation nothing else is required if we remember these two equation any kind of question that has been asked in civil services maths option for simple harmonic motion or going to be asked in future we can solve this question these two equations are more than enough for that right so let us start for some 
with some previous year questions. So this was a question that was asked in Indian Forest Service exam in 2017. So I'll read this question. A particle is undergoing simple harmonic motion with the time period t about a center point O, and it passes through the position p. It passes through the position p, and op is given b with the velocity v in the direction of op. Prove that the time that elapses before it returns to p is this thing, right? So what the question is saying? We have been provided with a simple harmonic motion, and the time period of the motion is given to us. The time period is t. Then we have given some specific point. We have given we have been given a posi a point O, sorry a point P. A point P is provided to us, and we know that the distance of point P from the reference point that is O P is b. That is given to us, and we also know that velocity of the particle at point P is v. these two things are provided to us position vector of point p and velocity of point p so now what we have to do we have to find the time that it elapses before i mean we have to find the time that particle and uh, also given that the velocity vector is the direction of op so o is here p is here so vector op will be in this direction so he is saying that at uh, the observation point at a specific time when we are observing the particle at p the velocity is in this direction the velocity of the particle is in this direction the direction of op vector and this particle will the time we need to find is particle p or oh sorry particle from point p to b and when the particle returns from b to p so t required is when the particle come back to point p that will be time period taken from p to b plus the time period from b Again to the point. This is the time that we need to define, and we also know that the posi. Uh, what we say that we also know that the motion of the particle is symmetric with respect to x-axis. We have established that n number of times now. So since the motion is symmetric, we can say that the time, uh, the time that consumed by the particle from p to b, and the motion of the particle in the reverse direction from b to p, due to symmetry with respect to the reference point. due to symmetry and even symmetric distribution of the position vector with respect to the end points the time period taken from p to b and b to p will be the same due to symmetrical motion due to symmetrical motion right so total time required is 2 times pb since pb and bp is same so we just need to have to find this time period the time taken by the particle from the initial point that is p to this end point node point b we just have to need to find this time period and we have to multiply it by 2 and what we have to show that this will be equal to this uh, this term that is provided to us so let us start this is a very very simple question I'll draw the diagram again. Op is b and velocity at point p is v. So we'll start with this omega square a square minus x square, right? And v is dx by dt taking under root both the side. Under root a square minus x square. I have done nothing new. We have. We, I just have put velocity as dx by dt and taken under root on both the side of the equation. Then we will separate our variables. Will omega dt. Integrating this thing, it's a simple integral. We will start when the particle is at point P. We'll take the time that is zero. That's our reference time, and distance at that point will be b, right? Since the distance, uh, the position vector of P is b, and we need to find time period of PB, time taken from P to B. Let us, uh, and we know that the distance of B is a, since OB is the amplitude, and we know that amplitude is a, right? At time t equal to zero, the position vector is b, the particle is at P, and the time PB, 
when the time taken with the particle to reach from P to B is T P B and the position vector will be the O B and O B is our amplitude. So this is again the same differential just that we saw two slides before. This will be sine inverse x by a is equal to omega t. Putting the values of integral from b to a from 0 to tpb. Right, a very simple thing. So putting these values, it is sine inverse a by a minus sine inverse b by a is equal to omega tpb. And we know that sin a by a is 1 and sin inverse 1 is pi by 2 minus sin inverse b by a is equal to omega tpb. And we also know that this is b by a is omega tpb. And we know this since I established that before also cos pi by 2 minus theta is sin theta. So, sin inverse is cos inverse theta, right? So, using this thing, we can write it directly this thing and time Pb then will be equal to 1 by omega cos inverse B by A. This is our solution and we require to find T required is 2 Pb, 2 times of Pb. That will be 2 by omega. Right. So now we have to do only some juggling to come to this specific term. We need to represent our time period in this specific term since this is what asked in the question. Using basic trigonometry, this is theta, this is b, this is a using Pythagoras, this is a square minus b square. So cos inverse b by a will be equal to tan inverse this by this. tan inverse under root a square minus b square by b. So putting this thing over here, t required is 2 by omega And we know that omega is 2 pi by time period. We have to eliminate omega also. We have to put our answer in terms of time period t and velocity b. And 2 by omega is t by pi tan inverse under root a square minus b square upon b. And further after this, after this, we can say that using the same relation between velocity and position vector, our relation was omega square a square minus x square. So at specific point p, x is b and velocity is v. Putting this thing in our initial equation, omega square a square minus b square. Right. So putting the value of a square minus b square in our required time period, we write under root a square minus b square will be b by omega b by omega b and and omega is equal to 2 pi by time period so eliminating omega from the final equation we will get v by b and 1 by omega is t by 2 pi so this is the time period that will elapse that will be taken by the particle to reach from point p to again to the point p our time required is this thing and let's see whether this thing was in the question it is t by pi and uh, tan inverse v t by 2 by p t by pi tan inverse v t by 2 by 2 pi b right so this was a very simple question this should not take anything more than five minutes to solve this it's a very simple question that was asked so next question this was a question that was asked in 2018 it is saying a particle moving with simple harmonic motion in a straight line 
a simple harmonic motion in a straight line has velocities v1 and v2 at distances x1 and x2 respectively from the center of its path we need to find the period of its motion right so we have been provided two specific points where velocities are v1 distance is x1 velocity is v2 and distance is x2 this is what is provided to us and we need to find period of the motion another very simple question here we have been provided two variables the position vector and the velocity vector so obviously we will use to start the question we will use the basic relation between velocity vector and position vector that was velocity square is equal to omega square a square minus x square so this is the only relation that we will be requiring to solve this question so putting these two specific values v1 square is equal to omega square a square minus x1 square at x1 velocity is v1 and at x2 is a square minus x2 square so these are two equations so now this uh, these are two system of uh, system of two equations and we have two variables over here omega and a we need to find the relation of omega with respect to x and v and we have to eliminate a from these two uh, these two system of equation and this is a very simple thing to do two equations two variable we have to remove one variable right it is just another slide v1 square is equal to omega square a square minus x square these are two equations so we can write from the first equation a square is equal to just jumbling with the word this jumbling with the variables from one let us say this v equation 3 this was our equation 1 this was our equation 2 and from equation 2 similarly jump jumbling with the variables we will get a square is equal to v 2 square by omega square minus x 2 square. Let's say this be equation four. So now, equating equation three and four, left hand side of both equation three and four are same. That is a square. We can write equating three and four. V one square by omega square. Plus x two square. So we have to, uh, what we can say, we have to reduce this variable uh, into a single equation, and we have to separate omega from the rest of the variables. It's a very simple exercise to do. V one square minus v two square by omega square, taking this thing left side of the equation and taking x one square to the right side. X two square minus x one square. Right. So from this thing, I'll write it over here. Omega square will be v one square minus v two square upon x two square minus x one square. This is our omega, and we need to find time period. So time period is two pi by omega. This is our solution. We said omega square is equal to v one square minus v two square upon x two square minus x one square, and and then time period is two pi by omega. Right. So we can write time period is equal to two pi by under root. Omega is under root this thing. X two square minus x one square upon v one square minus v two square. This is our time period, and we were given two specific points x one and x two position vector was with the velocities v one and v two. We need to find the time, and this will be the time period of this simple harmonic motion. I hope this is a very simple thing, and we all understand how to tackle uh, how to tackle such questions. Here are only two basic 
equations that we write over here what were these these are the two only equations that we require to know we have to remember these two equations and any question of simple harmonic motion can be solved by these two equations only thank you Thank you.